I'm excited. Y'all got me hollering over here. Amen. We welcome our internet audience. Amen. We look good on the internet. Amen. We thank God for that, and we want to encourage each and every one of you. We thank God and give God a hand clap of praise for our praise team. Amen. 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 I, I think God is able. Amen. And we thank God for your gifts. Amen. 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 All right. Let's go higher in the Lord as we know God has sent us and embarked us on our sermon series as we are looking at the power of one. All power and authority belongs to God. Amen. 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 So let's go to Ephesians. And I just need you to pray with me for a little while. Ephesians chapter 5. And if you could, I'm going to touch on some areas in that chapter. And then all you have to do is tell your neighbor, just flip the page. Amen. Because we're going to read a particular from the first verses of chapter 6. So let's start at chapter 5. We'll go from there. Amen. 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 Take your time. Ephesians. Ephesians. Amen. Ephesians. The New Testament. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. And if you have it, say, I have it. I have it. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and start in Ephesians chapter 5. Let's start at verse number 15, amen? Amen, amen. All right, take your time, take your time. Just, just holler at me. Just go on and say, hey, pastor. Just holler. Amen, amen. Yes, indeed. We're going we to hold my mule right now. Right We're going to hold it up. Amen. Amen. All right. Does everyone have Ephesians chapter 5? Okay. All right. Let's start. And this is coming from the New King James. Let's start at verse 15. And the scripture says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now go down to verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Say the body. the body. Verse 24. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, mm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Mm. Verse 25. Yes, sir. Husbands, love your wives right. just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Now go and flip the page. Just look at chapter 6 mm -hmm. and go to verse 1. All right. I'm still here in a few pages. That's all right. That's a long page. Amen. All right. Verse 1 says, children. Say children. Children. Obey. Say obey. Obey. Your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Hmm. Verse 2. Honor your father and mother, hmm. which is the first commandment with promise, hmm. that I may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Hmm. Verse 4. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. If I could, just for a moment, and I know this might seem interesting, just because it's Ephesians and 
how we look at Ephesians, especially chapter 5. But I, I just need to put a twist on it. Amen? And I'm going to keep it doctrinal. And I'm also going to keep it where it needs to be from the title, Praising His Authority. Praising His Authority. Praising His Authority. I got excited when the Lord gave me the title of this text because I knew I was dealing in some fertile ground. I knew I was dealing with some imminent situations. I knew I was getting into a landfill. And I knew when I looked at how we see the Apostle Paul and how we look at the power of one. We look at the power of one and understand that all power and authority belongs to God. And I, I was encouraged about how the Lord had given me this particular text and how we look at these chapters in Ephesians. Remember, that there's only six chapters in Ephesians. And in the midst of that, the first three chapters of what Paul writes about is doctrinal. And when we look at that, we also see in the next three chapters, which deals with chapters 4, 5, and 6, it deals with how we look at our providential lives, how we look at what God is saying. And I know that's a 25 cent word, but basically all I'm talking about is how you look at what you believe in. How you look at your, let me say it like this, your behavior. And Paul was saying in the midst of how can we be Christians when we want to talk about behavior when we can't even teach about doctrine. So Paul had to make sure that he was letting the people know in the midst of how we see the text and how we see what God is saying, he has to encourage us because for the simple fact that many times we hear preachers and teachers always beating somebody upside the head with the word of God. And I want to encourage you, we don't need to beat people upside the head. We need to give God the praise. Amen. We need to give him the glory. And that's why God has given me praise in his authority. All right, all right. When you praise his authority, you can see what Paul is saying. You can understand in how we look at his authority. When we look at the husband and the wife, when we look at the children, uh, knowing that they are under the covering, they are in a particular area of how we see our lives. Beloved, it's when we look at our lives and how we see what the church at Ephesus was doing and how we see the Ephesians and how we look at this, we have to understand there is a disparity in the midst of how we see Christians and non-Christians. I don't want to get into anything but understanding in the midst of knowing this, the Bible is right. All right, all right. We, we can try to judge people all day long, but not in this church. We can try to do things out in the world all day long, yeah. but not where you know that you're getting the right teaching. You're getting the right doctrine. And God is allowing you to see, beloveds. And what Paul was saying is, we got to teach it right. All right, all right. Yes, we sir. have to understand yes, in the midst of Jesus Christ, Jesus did not come to condemn the law. Right. God allows us to see in the midst of how we look at our belief system, how we look at our behavior, how we look at our faith, something has to influence you. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you get hungry, you're going to eat a bologna sandwich. If you get hungry, you're going to go in the refrigerator. If you get hungry, you're going to be influenced by something that's growling in your life. I don't know about you, but when I get hungry, my stomach sure lets me know. And when we see that and when we hear it, you have to understand there's a conduct that you follow. And this is what Paul is saying. When you get hungry, when you get nourished, 
guess what? Now you're not hungry for the word anymore. All right. Why? Because you're believing what's being fed to you. That's why Paul is allowing us to see, even when we look at this praising his authority, can we break down authority? When we look at authority, there are two things that come to my attention. There is authority that is mentioned in the original text, in the original language that references dynamite because it's called dynamis. But there's also this type of authority that Paul was talking about in the text today. It is called exousia. What that is saying, beloveds, and I know this is, but it's important to understand when you hear authority, people get it all mixed up. All right, all right. They get it all conscrewed. All right. They get it all twisted. Because when they say power and authority, they feel like they have this boldness over you. Mm -hmm. And Paul is not saying that when you deal with, I'm going to just go right to it. Because when you look at the husband and the wife, All right. when you look at the father and his children, when you deal with parental authority, and that's what this is all about. When you look at this particular time and period and how we look at the power of one, God is teaching us, beloveds, we can't deal with this dynamis type of authority. We can't deal with this physical type of authority because that is something that is not going to allow the generation to make it the next day. When we look at how we see what Paul is trying to say, he's saying the Bible is right. The, the things of the word of God are implemented because of what the living word is saying. We can't get conscrewed or mixed up because how we separate, how we want to separate the Old Testament from the New Testament. Beloved, if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it all comes together. That's right, that's right. Don't get mixed up in the 400 years. Just go to Malachi and then flip the page and go right to Matthew. Don't get caught up in the things that will mess you up. God has given you the whole word of God. It doesn't make sense to go ahead and say, okay, I believe in this, but I don't believe in that. The devil is a liar. You have to understand this is where this authority comes in. We can't be pushing people around because the word of God as Christians, we must understand the exousia. And God is saying, my authority comes from the word of God. This is what Paul is saying. I don't have to be like the ones in Romans. I don't have to be the ones who tried to crucify Jesus. I don't have to be the ones who tried to take care of Judah and who tried to Assyrians, who tried to deal with the northern church, with the northern people, the tribes of Israel. God is encouraging you, beloveds. You stay and keep your mind and pray about his authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you praise his authority, you're able to see through the fact that you're giving God the praise, you're giving him the glory, and you're understanding in the midst of how we see the text come together, you're understanding the power of one. All right, all right. Now, all of a sudden, you're seeing the power of the Father. You're understanding through communication. And this is what Paul was trying to tell the church in Ephesus. Look, you can't go around here being all literal. You can't go around here feeling like you in charge and you large and in charge. God is letting them know in the midst of my authority, in the midst of my power, all power comes from God. Yeah, and when we yeah. see the power yeah, of God, yeah. we understand now we can see Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. I know it's coming together for you. Yeah. I'm just getting past the introduction. But it's important to understand when you look at power and authority, when you understand praising his authority, beloveds, this goes indirectly into your mind. Thank you, God. Thank you. God allows us to see in the midst of my first point and how this leads us into it. The Bible is not ununiform. The Bible is connected. Why? Because we see the rightful power through the word of God. Thank you. God shows us in the midst of how we look at this first point. When you look at Ephesians 5 verse 25 it says, husbands love your wives right, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. In other words, beloveds, I know I'm just hitting it real good today. That's all right. I'm going to be like Joyce Myers. I'm preaching good. I need to let you know, love your wives. What am I saying? In the midst of how we look at the literal point and how Paul was trying to say it literally, remember, Paul is back over 2,000 years ago trying to reach a literal people. In other words, he was basically letting people know, and I'll say it like this, when we talk about people, we have to look at and be mindful and be considerate of what God is doing in their lives. Well, what am I saying, brother pastor? Well, I'm basically letting you know in the midst of heavenly things, I got to bring it on the earthly level. Yeah. All right, All right. Uh, you're going to get that on the way home. Just wake up and write this down. Because you must understand, too many, and I'm just talking about people. I just need you to know, beloveds, too many husbands love in the midst of mess. Woo. I know that was hard. I'm moving on. In the midst of how we look at it, we got to leave love to God. Yeah. I'll say that again. I just want you to know. In the midst of how we see Paul was letting people know, we need to lead the love to God. Why? Because the true love of God is knowing that no matter how much stuff we get involved with, God is going to allow you to keep the right company. He's going to allow you to produce the things that he's already showing you in the midst of the love that he's already given you. How do I know? Because he shows us. He's saying in the midst of how we see the literal understanding of husband and wife, what is he really saying, beloved? I'm glad you asked. He's showing us in the midst of of Jesus Christ. But if we don't understand praising his authority, he, we won't see Jesus. We'll get caught up in the things that will destroy people. It will mess you up. Well, and God is saying in the midst of Jesus, some people don't even believe he even came. <laughs> So all of a sudden, now we done read through the scriptures and the Bible is saying, well, this man is coming back. Well, this man is Jesus. This man is God. And in the midst of all my mess, I believe that the Bible is right. Y'all want to get this in a minute. In the midst of what Paul was trying to say, he was trying to get you to understand the Father. In other words, love your wives. Why? Because Jesus was coming back for the bride. Can somebody help me please? Because the scripture says he's coming back for a church without spot, without blemish. Now let me say it like this. My suit is wrinkle free. And sometimes in our lives... We need to get rid of some wrinkles because you know as much as I know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus will fix your life. So the first point is this, beloved. We as a people have to love. 
Oh, let me say it like this. It doesn't matter. I'm going to just go ahead off the script. It don't matter if you husband, wife, children. What we have to do, beloveds, as Christians, as people, is to love. Oh, let me say it like this. Oh, I didn't get nothing out of here. I'm going to wake it up up in here. Does anybody love anybody? Yeah. Thank you. You got to understand, praising his authority is knowing that you love God. Is knowing that you love the Father. Can somebody help me here? Don't act like you're dead on me. But when you praise his authority, you got to praise the Father. He's still your parent. you're going to get this. So in the midst of that first point, that leads me to my second point. Right. When we move past, I know this is a tough subject, but when we move past Ephesians 5 and 25, it draws us to the next point. Because not only do people have to love, you know in this world people try to hate on you and they try to bust you up, they try to mess you up, they try to knock you down, but when you love the Father, when you give Him praise, when you lift up the name of Jesus, so now all of a sudden, we see in the midst of love, we go even further, because Ephesians, look at verse 17 of chapter 5, it says, be ye not unwise. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now look at verse 18. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. I feel. I feel. I feel. I'm getting my feel today. I'm getting fed. And I'm, I, I'm going to bust you up today. When we look at this second point, because not only we as people have to love, but we as people have to learn. Right. I, I, internet, just keep holding on. Let me break this down. Because when you know many things in your life is going on, let me say it again. When you know many things in life is going on, you have to understand the will of God. You have to know in the midst of what God is showing you, you can't be unwise. The scripture says, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What does that mean? Well, Paul is trying to let us know. He's saying, church, Ephesus, however way you want to put it, people, look, I am Paul. I am the apostle according to what God has allowed me. I am the one coming here to teach you. Whether you believe me or not, if you believe me, then you accept Jesus Christ. If you don't believe me, then you have another father. So you can't praise his authority. Oh, I knew I hit a home run there. I was Hank Aaron on that one. You got to understand, if you got a different father, you can't praise him. If you got a different believer, you can't praise him. God wants us to learn. How can we love all day long and we can't learn what we love him? Ooh, let me go a little further. Look, look, not only does he want us to learn, but he wants us to understand the Holy Ghost. He wants us to understand the Holy Spirit. Because in the midst of how we used to be and how we contrast what, let me say it like this. Let me say it in an earthly way. Some things are going to control you in your mind in your life. Let me say it like this. How is it that we get so excited about the things that control our lives? Okay, let me go even further. See, because when we see what Paul was trying to say, he was letting the world know. He was letting Ephesus know, look, I'm not trying to judge you because you out here doing Mad Dog 2020. I'm not trying to judge you because you out 
there doing wild turkey. I'm not trying to judge you because you up here going to the liquor store doing top shelf and you drinking. I'm not here to judge you. That's why Paul was saying, but not drunk with wine in excess. In other words, God is saying, whatever is controlling you, whether it's women, wine, or wages, whatever it is, I'm not here to judge you. Paul is not here to judge you. But there's going to be a time in your life when you need to learn. Oh, I know. That was tough right there. It was hard right there. Let me say it like this. When a person is filled with the Spirit, in other words, you can't be filled and still be out there walking and talking in a different way. So in other words, God is not judging you because you're doing one thing and you're coming around doing another. God is not judging you right now anyway. God is not trying to judge you because he already loved you. Isn't that the first point? We as a people have to love. Don't you understand? God gave his only begotten son that whosoever what? Believe in him shall not what? Perish. I'm trying to help somebody because even though I done gone through some stuff, perfect but I'm still your pastor I know I'm not perfect but I'm still your pastor I know I talk over here I know I'm not perfect but I'm still your pastor let me go over here I know I'm not perfect but I'm still your pastor what am I saying beloved I need to praise his authority I need to know who my father is no matter where I no matter how it is, I'm gonna praise him. Why? Because he loves me. I love him. And I'm still learning. God is in my house. God is in my life. And you got to understand when you praise him, when you lift up the name of Jesus. We got to walk in submission. Yeah. We got. 
got to be obedient. In other words, submission is obedience. And all of a sudden, now we can see. Oh, let me say it like this. I know I'm going to get some husbands, man. But I know in the midst of the prophet from a husband, it's God's plan that he sees the Savior. He got to see Jesus. You got to see Jesus. You just can't have a time. In other words, beloved, Christ, God, the Father, in the midst of how we see submission, there, it's, there are rewards to submission, beloved. Ephesians 5 and 28, wake up and write this down. It says, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. In other words, beloveds, in the midst of how we see this great love of God and how we see what God is doing, look at verse chapter 6, verse 1. Now you can flip the change. You can flip the page now because, beloveds, when you flip the page, you're basically flipping and moving past in the things of what was in your past. Because if you can get from chapter 5 to chapter 6, you can move on from the things you used to be, from the things you used to do. In other words, tell your neighbor, it ain't hard to flip that page. So many times in our lives, we get trouble to praise God. We get trouble to just give, lift up his name. But God is saying, all you got to do is change your day, turn the page. And what God is saying in chapter 6, verse 1, he says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. So in other words, beloved, not only do we see chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. God is basically saying, in the midst of how we look at the language of Jesus, how we look at the language of how we see the body of Christ, God had to bring the illustration to let us understand in the midst of how we see one of the main things according to scripture but not that is not important but what God is saying in the midst of when you put it all together yeah. let me say it like this when you bring it all together from Ephesians chapter 5 all the way to chapter 6 not dealing with chapter 1 through chapter 3 why because if you get chapter 1 through chapter 3 then you can move on to chapter 4 then you can move on to chapter 5. Then you can move on to, to chapter 6 in your life. God is showing us in the midst of obedience. He's showing us there's going to be some personal characteristics that's going to encourage you. Why? Because in the midst of parenthood, the Father has allowed you to see life. God woke me up this morning. God started me on our way. In the midst of how we see life, he's encouraging you. What is it that motivates you? What is it that is guiding you? So now, all of a sudden, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13, it says, put on the whole arm of God. Oh, can I bring it home now? When we praise the Lord, when we praise his authority, no matter how rough it was getting through this sermon, God is saying, I'm not here to judge you. It ain't your time. All I'm trying to do is get you to Ephesians 6. Is to get you to verse 11. To get you to verse 13. Because when you put on the whole armor of God and you see that you can stand the wiles of the devil. When you can see that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age. Your name of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Can I tell you, beloveds, the kingdom of God wrestles not against flesh and blood. The kingdom of suffers violence and the violent take it by force so what I'm 
message, but I need somebody to praise his name. I need somebody to praise his authority. I need somebody to know there's peace in your life. There's love in your life. There's grace in your life. There's mercy in your life. Don't worry about what you're going through because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Y'all thought I was going to try to preach you to the grave, but the devil is a lie. God wants you to hear this word. He wants you to open your ears, open your eyes, because God got your life. God got me. He allowed me. He took the sting out of death so I can have life. Therefore, we need to put on. and 23 and 24 says peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ it don't get any simpler than that dog but then it goes further it says verse 24 and this is the close grace tell your neighbor grace grace, grace be with Oh, Woo! wake up and write that down. He says, grace be with all. But then it goes further. All those who love. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just hitting my points. I'm just giving you what I already said. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ. In Sincerity, not just because you hear his name, not just because you hear him, but because you have a relationship. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So when you praise his authority, you're not just given an airplane way. All right. All right. You're not just at the airport. <laughs> what you're doing is being sincere. Because when you praise his authority, Thank you. Thank you. you're praising your father. Amen. Your parental authority comes from the father. Amen. And God has allowed you, when you praise him, when you know who he is, God will continue to bless you. Especially this week. And as we continue on in this sermon series, the power of one, God shows us how the word of God will preach to your spirit and allow you to see, no matter how the text is written, to understand not just the literal, but the spiritual that will increase. Well, audience, thank you for listening to our broadcast this morning at Faith Christian Fellowship Church here in the city of Bedford, Texas. Uh, we'd love for you to come out next week um, to www.faithchurch06.com as we stream live every Sunday. But also I would encourage you to uh, watch our broadcast and if you do have a love offering, please send it to P.O. Box 211054, Bedford, Texas, 760. Nine five. We'll see you next week.